What is up, guys? My name is Ryan Susan 18 on the Ryan Susan 18 Forever channel. This is my WWE Raw review for October 1st, 2012. Happy October. Happy October festivities to all you wrestling fans out, out there. Well, let's get it started. We start off with CM Punk and Paul Heyman cutting a promo. Uh, CM Punk announces that Punk vs. Cena inside the Hell in the Cell at the Hell in the Cell pay per view will not happen. Heyman shows footage from last week of his proposal to AJ Lee. Um, pretty much the reason why the uh, footage was shown was due to the fact that AJ Lee had hit Paul Heyman uh, with a slap. And uh, WWE uh, board of directors said that AJ Lee could not hit a manager, superstar, or anyone related to uh, the WWE, or otherwise she would be suspended or terminated, or whatever the WWE board of directors wanted to do with her. Um, and uh, Vicky Guerrero comes out saying that, you know, the same thing happened to her uh, with AJ. Uh, that she had gotten slapped by AJ and all that stuff. And Dawson comes up with an idea and says, why can't we have two co-champs? He says, think about it. Paul Heyman, or actually he says, Vicky Girl and Paul Heyman taking over Monday Night Raw. Then AJ Lee comes out and says that Daniel Bryan is her executive coach. Daniel Bryan comes out, of course, dissing AJ, saying that her emotions have been changing around from happy to sad, angry, just because of their uh, breakup back at WrestleMania, or after WrestleMania, I should say. Um, then King comes out saying that uh, AJ Lee's a good kisser. Um, pretty much the thing breaks down to a riot. Uh, we have CM Punk saying, I'm the best in the world. Of course, we have Team Hell No saying, I'm the tag team champions, I'm the tag team champions. And also you say, I'm Mr. Money in the Bank. And uh, AJ Lee, you know, of course, she screams saying, stop it, stop it, stop it. And um, announces that it would be Team Hell No versus the WWE Champion CM Punk and Dolph Ziggler um, for, in the main event tonight. And uh, we will move on from there. Then we have his Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara facing Primo and Epico. Um, a very good match. We had the Mexicans and the Puerto Ricans. Not trying to be racist, but it actually is true because uh, Primo and Epico are Puerto Rican and Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara are uh, Mexican. But anyway, guys, uh, Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara, very high flying, high flying maneuvers in this match. Uh, really helped them out in the match, actually, along with Primo and Epico uh, performing some good moves in the match. Um, Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara will pull off with a victory with Rey Mysterio hitting the uh, if you want to call it a tadpole splash or a frog splash, whatever you prefer to call it, on Primo and getting the victory for his team. And uh, I really enjoyed the uh, Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara uh, outfit. Um, the uh, half Sin Cara, half Rey Mysterio outfit that was very uh, creative by the uh, people who make the attires for the WWE. So uh, credit is due to them. And, um, then we, and we will move on to that. Uh, also, I forgot to mention that the primetime players were actually... Uh, uh, seated at the top of the entrance ramp watching the match as this would be a tag team tournament to see who would be the next number one contender for, for the tag team championships against Team Hell No. Then we move on to Brodus Clay versus Antonio Cesaro. I thought this would be a squash match for Brodus Clay, but apparently it backfired. I mean, I didn't really expect Antonio Cesaro to pull off against, you know, a man of that stature. And uh, as in, like, this man, you know, Brodus Clay is huge. I mean, he's a Funkasaurus. Um... But, I mean, what Antonio Cesaro did with his finishing move, I mean, he literally picked up a 400-pound man and brought his clay and slammed him down to the ground for the 1-2-3. And Antonio Cesaro, you're a United States champion, who the man who can speak in five different languages, pulls off with the victory. Then we would move on as to AJ Lee talking to uh, Kaylin backstage, uh, saying that she's sorry for not listening to her about uh, going out with Daniel Bryan uh, earlier in the year, uh, or actually uh, last last year I should say um, and uh, says that actually she's not sorry it starts to laugh uh, very uh, very uh, you know uh, devilish type of way um, then we would have is Zack Ryder the Long Island I see versus the awesome one The Miz the Intercontinental Champion uh, Zack Ryder mainly had the momentum in this match uh, Zack Ryder you know uh, uh, hit with the Broski boot, um, and the Miz would pull off with a uh, surprising victory. He ends the skull crushing finale on Zack Ryder. Then we would have the World Championship debate in which Big Show and Sheamus would receive a, uh, a series of questions from the WWE Universe via Tao or a Twitter. Or I mean via Twitter, via via uh, not, yeah via Twitter, but uh, by the tweets from the WWE Universe. 
excuse me guys, but uh, of course uh, Booker T will be conducting this. Uh, Big Show actually breaks his podium, and uh, there's the match here at Tout, uh, because mainly all the questions were uh, were uh, tweets from WWE uh, fans, and uh, that didn't really uh, do anything, but uh, b making uh, fun of uh, the Big Show uh, losing in 45 seconds, and that was pretty much the main topic of the uh, whole uh, debate. Uh, Shane was making fun of uh, Big Show for losing in 45 seconds to Daniel Bryan at TLC 2011. Um, and uh, pretty much uh, Big Show would be a coward and uh, would leave the ring and uh, we are left with Sheamus by, him, by himself with uh, Booker T. Then we move on is to Ryback versus Tenzai rematch for Friday Night Smackdown in which Ryback of course would win. Um, of course last Friday, Friday Night Smackdown and tonight. Um, he actually wouldn't win this, with his uh, finishing move. Uh, he tried to do it uh, I, I believe three times in the match uh, but couldn't so he actually hits in a sense a kind of a clothesline from hell. But, uh, you know, it worked, and, uh, you know what, Ryback would pull for the victory, so kudos to Ryback. Then we have his Eve Torres versus Beth Phoenix. Um, Eve Torres pretty much uh, stole one once again, uh, pretending that uh, Beth Phoenix had poked her in the eye and then hitting her finishing move on Beth Phoenix, and Eve Torres, your Divas champion, will win this match. Then we have Santino Morella versus Heath Slater. Um, the one-man rock band Heath Slater with uh, some some. Uh, special friends in um, in uh, ooh, Jenna Mahal and uh, the chosen one Drew McIntyre. Uh, so a pretty odd group to see that. I mean, the one-man rock band uh, Jenna Mahal and uh, the chosen one uh, Drew McIntyre. Um, pretty much, uh, Santino would win via disqualification as Jenna Mahal and Drew McIntyre would actually come in to the ring and attack uh, Santino Morella in the process. In the process. In the process. And um, that would be the end of that, and uh, we would move on to Sheamus versus Damian Sandow. Sheamus hits a double bro kick on both guys, completely amazing, as in Damian Sandow and Cody Rose, completely knocks both of them out, and uh, Sheamus would be your victor in that. Then we have his JR appreciation night. CM Punk comes out and uh, says that, we're, that they're going to teach the fans some respect um, and by by JR saying that CM Punk is the best in the world, but JR says that you have been a jackass in these past couple of weeks, and Punk says, who's going to come and come to your aid, Jim? Is it going to be Stone Cold, Stone Cold, Stone Cold? It sure is only going to be Jerry. And uh, pretty much JR says, you know what you should do to prove that you're the best in the world? Accept John Cena's challenge at Hell in the Cell to prove to me, to prove to everyone that you are the best in the world. And of course CM Punk says, yeah, I've already beaten John Cena multiple times. So what do I have left to prove to face John Cena? Um, and uh, pretty much uh, uh, CM Punk would give uh, Jim Ross the uh, walk of shame, but Ryback would actually come out, uh, actually direct JR back into the ring, and uh, we have the ultimate stare down between Punk and Ryback, the Feed Me More chance, the crowd was electric for that, that segment, and uh, of course Punk uh, being the heel character that he is now, would uh leave the uh would leave the ring and get prepared for his uh, main event match. Um, then we have Alberto Del Rio versus Kofi Kingston. Pretty simple. Alberto Del Rio uh, hits the uh, uh, cross arm breaker on Kofi Kingston, causing him to tap out. And Alberto Del Rio will be your victor. Then we have his team Hell No versus CM Punk and Dolph Ziggler with special guest referee AJ lead your main event. Um, we have. AJ Lee actually ejecting both Paul Heyman and Vicky Guerrero. Um, uh, during the match, Team Hell No had a big advantage in the match. Uh, they had the pretty much the, the whole uh, advantage in the match. And um, Punk and, and Zero didn't really have a lot of offense going. So um, as uh, Paul Heyman and Vicky Guerrero were being ejected, um, a vicious choke slam. I mean, I think St. Paul must have lost the tooth or he must have spit something out. Um, but, man, I mean, that, that choke slam was vicious. Uh, the one, two, three count, and uh, Team Hell No will be your victor, and we will left, and we are left with the, is of course the I'm the tag team champions, I'm the tag team champions, uh, chant. So uh, before I go, guys, and before I say my final words on what I think about uh about uh Monday Night Raw, um, today starts uh, uh Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Today is October first. Um, 
So uh, as today is the 1st of October, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, of course. Throughout the month of October, uh, the WWE has partnered with the Susan G. Komen for the cure to put an end to breast cancer. And uh, every 74 seconds, a woman dies in the world from breast cancer. So go to Komen.org to see how you can help in the fight against breast cancer as we put an end once and for all uh, to stop breast cancer from happening. And uh, also, guys, if you guys, you know, use credit cards and, like, usually buy stuff on WWEshop.com, uh, throughout the month of October, um, I will be getting my Rise Above, uh, Rise Above Cancer t-shirt um, in the mail pretty soon, and uh, I'll be wearing that throughout the month of October, and I'll be wearing it possibly during my Raw reviews. And uh, so if you guys have money, if you guys, you know, usually on WWEshop.com, uh, I encourage you guys to uh, get the Rise Above Cancer gear and uh, to support the fight against breast cancer awareness. So anyway guys, this has been Rise of the 18, a very emotional uh, ending uh, to this video as I talk about breast cancer awareness. So it's very important guys, once again guys, if you guys have money, if you got, I'm not saying like you guys have, million, have millions of dollars, millions of dollars, no, not like that, but if you guys, you know, usually go to www.shop.com, if you guys usually buy gear, Get the Rise of Love Cancer gear. I, even if you don't like seeing it, you have to respect him. And he's doing a good cause along with the WWE to support Breast Cancer Awareness Month by, you know, advertising uh, the Rise Above Cancer t-shirt and the uh, Never Give Up on the Back and, of course, the Hustle, Loyalty, and Respect. So anyway, guys, this has been Rise Season 18 on the Rise Season 18 Forever Channel. This has been my WWE Raw Review. Happy October 1st to all you guys out there. Happy festivities. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll leave a link in the box down below and of course in the box that is surrounded around me and uh, this has been Rises 18 once again guys enjoy the rest of your night and uh, this has been my raw review I'm out guys peace